What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football mock draft for you back on ESPN with a 12-team full PPR mock where we will be selecting seventh overall. Should be pretty interesting. And as you can see, this thing has kicked off. But while we get to our pick, a reminder, if you guys enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear it in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's take a look at what has happened so far. And I got to say, it's pretty intriguing here. Typically, when we've done these ESPN drafts in the past, we've picked like third or fourth overall, and we can capitalize on how they rank their wide receivers. And we can land a Christian McCaffrey third or fourth overall, uh, an Austin Eckler fifth overall, whatever the case might be. Uh, and, you know, we're going to take advantage of it yet again because we're on the clock and B. John Robinson, who I have as a tier one guy alongside uh, Eckler and Christian McCaffrey is there for us. To me, this is a no brainer pick. I think he should be a top five selection, honestly. Uh, but the way that ESPN has, uh, you know, valued the wide receiver position here is is just something that is going to be different from platform to platform. We can have the conversation, you know, do you think that the wide receivers should be going uh, with the first three picks like we saw here? Personally, I don't because uh, I could argue I think that I'm going to be able to get decent wide receiver value later on compared to the running back value later on. If, you know, if this was just kind of the prototypical type of draft, um, you know, that's the one downside with all these platforms they all are skewed one way or another. That's why I kind of do like doing these mocks on Fantasy Pros sometimes a little bit more so because it's a situation where, you know, uh, it's it's varied uh, and the built-in variance in general, I think it's a little bit more accurate, more up-to-date rankings. Uh, but, you know, I digress. Here, we have a selection. Do we go wide receiver or running back? I think we go with a... Um, we go through a running back, and I'm going to go with the guy that I'm very high on. That is Tony Pollard. Uh, I have him as a top five running back, basically, without Ezekiel Elliott there. Now, sure, you know that that's variable to change if somebody uh, like a London Fournette or something comes in there, basically a veteran to spell uh, Tony Pollard again. The other guy that I was considering here was Nick Chubb. Uh, tremendous, tremendous value for all three guys here in Tony Pollard, Ramondre, and Nick Chubb. I think that. You know, those are arguably going to be the best three picks um, in in this entire draft. But let's kind of break down what happened after our Bijan selection in the first round. Uh, after we went Bijan, there was Travis Kelsey, Jonathan Taylor, tremendous value for Taylor there, um, followed by C.D. Lamb, Saquon Barkley, even better value for Barkley with 11th pick, then Stephon Diggs, then H.A. Brown, Amon Ra, Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry. I would not be selecting Derrick Henry that early on, uh, especially when, you know, Pollard, Ramondre, and Nick Chubb were all there. Uh, Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams would have been tempting if, if he was there for me. But again, the Jimmy Garoppolo situation does worry me a little bit with his potential injury. Uh, then we went Tony Pollard, Ramondre, Nick Chubb, uh, and then a run on some wide receivers with Jalen Waddle, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, Travis Etienne. So, you know, Really, we're at a point right now where uh, the top running backs are off the board for the most part. So I feel good about who we selected. Uh, let's go to the wide receiver position here. Uh, Chris Olave continues to be a guy that I think is very, very good value in the third round. Uh, you know, I know it might get boring for you guys to continue to see me draft him, things like that. But, you know, I want to highlight the best values. I want to try and put together the best roster. And uh, I think that selection there helps us go in that direction. Uh, but before that, in the third round, what we saw, Patrick Mahomes, so first quarterback off the board, Jameer Gibbs, Josh Allen. I don't like Jameer Gibbs, again, because of the running back by committee. Like I wouldn't be shocked if him and Montgomery finished with pretty close fantasy outputs when it's all said and done. Then you see DK Metcalf, Joe Mixon in early third round selection. I think that's pretty good value. Then T. Higgins. Uh, we went Chris Olave. Then the rest of the third round featured Jalen Hurts, Devonta Smith, Najee Harris, Keenan Allen, and Lamar Jackson. Some of those top quarterbacks starting to go. Uh, in, in fact, this 
Um, you know, this round included four of them with Mahomes, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, and Lamar Jackson. Is if we're looking running back here, Aaron Jones, Damian Pierce still on the board. Um, Aaron Jones really worries me without Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Miles Sanders is still there. I think that's a good value. Kenneth Walker, not a bad value pick either. Um, but let's see, let's see what's going on at wide receiver here. So the names that I'm looking at are DJ Moore, Calvin Ridley, Marquise Brown. Um, I really wouldn't have minded Amari Cooper as my number two wide receiver, but you know, oh well. So here, I think what I'm going to do is let me see what's going on at the tight end position. George Kittle's still there, kind of um, undervalued, I think. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add another running back. I'm going to go with a guy that I continue to really like in the fourth round. You call it the running back dead zone, call it whatever you want. But I think Miles Sanders is set up in a good position. I think he's going to be the bell cow for the Panthers. Uh, and I realize when we get to the fifth round, I'll probably still be able to select James Conner and Alexander Madison, something like that. Uh, and you know what? Maybe we will. Maybe we're just going to build a really, really deep team at the running back position. Um, and, and just capitalize on the way these rankings are. Um, we're starting to get some more auto picks here, but I think so far we're still seeing, you know, accurate selections. So nothing too, too crazy. Um, after a Miles Sanders pick, you see Jerry Judy, Debo Samuel, Joe Burrow. There goes Kenneth Walker, great value there. Rashad White, Chris Godwin. Um, I, I really like Chris Godwin. I just don't like him again without Tom Brady. Um, you know, the Bucks losing Brady, the Packers losing Rodgers. Those are substantial hits. Um, now here in this fifth round, we see Christian Watson, Deontay Johnson, DeAndre Hopkins, J.K. Dobbins. Uh, so we're in a good spot. Like I said, James Conner, Alexander Madison still there. I think right now, if he is available, I think Darren Waller would be a pretty good value pick. I could see a tight end run starting here. Um, so, you know, I, sure, we could use another wide receiver, DJ Moore, uh, Terry McLaurin, Calvin Ridley. Um, those are guys that I like. What are the chances that one of those drops to us as opposed to one of those tight ends? Marquise Brown, Alexander Madison just go. So uh, what, do, what do we do here? You know, I'll, I'll try and stay disciplined. I'll do my best to stay disciplined and um, go with the wide receiver position, which I think is a little bit more important. Uh, so I'm going DJ Moore as my number two wide receiver. Uh, I feel good about that. And I, I'm starting to feel even better after I see uh, the next three picks or Mike Evans, Terry McLaurin, Calvin Ridley, all the guys basically that we were considering. Justin Herbert goes. So uh, some of those top quarterbacks, uh, I wasn't really uh, considering it, to be honest with you, Herbert. Um, I, I wanted to round out my number two wide receiver spot. Let's see what's available to us in the sixth round. It'll be really interesting if uh, if Fields is there and maybe if like George Kittle is there because that, that stack with Fields and DJ Moore going to be tempting. Ooh, George Kittle just went. So yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, we're on the clock. So here I think Trevor Lawrence makes a decent amount of sense. Uh, I could see him having like that breakout type of year um, that, you know, we know he's capable of. We like the offense around him. Uh, would have loved George Kittle to fall to us, but doesn't break that way. So we'll just get, you know, we'll get that quarterback. The The difference is we're getting Trevor Lawrence in what? The uh, one, two, three, four, five in the sixth round as opposed to paying uh, a third round price for, you know, for Lamar Jackson or something like that. Uh, where you got to worry a little bit more about injuries, things of that nature. So we went Trevor Lawrence. The starting roster is pretty much complete. Uh, we just don't have a starting tight end as of right now. Um, I think we can go a lot of different directions, though, and we'll be okay because I could see somebody like Goddard or Kyle Pitts still being on the board, Evan Ingram, uh, David Njoku, Kyle Pitts did just get selected. So... I do think tight end, if you kind of do your research, if you target those high scoring offenses with some, uh, you know, proven uh, production at the tight end position, you can figure it out. 
Uh, there's always some diamonds in the rough. And I mean, look at Evan Ingram last year. Look at David Njoku. Look at Dalton Schultz in the years prior. So uh, there definitely, definitely is a value there. Uh, you just have to know what you're looking for. Uh, running back wise here, I mean, you've already got Bijan and Tony Pollard. So I, I feel like I don't have to make another running back selection. Wide receiver, Christian Kirk is there. Uh, but Calvin really is going to take away from the production of Christian Kirk. So I'm not necessarily looking to go in that direction. Uh, tight end, I, I mentioned it before, we can go that way. Evan Ingram, I think is a little bit of a reach right now. So what do we do? Um, I think Jahan Dotson, a popular breakout candidate. I, I kind of like that as well here. I think uh, good value. So, you know, what? actually... I'm, I'm going to go with, I'm going to pivot here. I'm going to go with the Alvin Kamara selection. Uh, I'm going to get depth first and foremost, but even if Alvin Kamara is suspended, which I think there's a very high likelihood of that happening, uh, I've got Bijan and Tony Pollard to hold, hold it down. I've got Miles Sanders as well if there's injuries. Um, I'm, I'm building a very, I think, deep running back rotation uh, with high upside, you know, if this was the real deal roster, uh, you could use it as trade bait, things like that. So I like I like how this is going for us here. Uh, I wanted to grab him before maybe, um, you know, he was selected. And unfortunately, we do lose out on Jahan Dotson, but it's okay. It's the price you pay. So here... You know, we've already got Olave and DJ Moore, so it's not the end of the world. I do think we can now select a tight end. So uh, now Evan Ingram getting that pairing with Trevor Lawrence, David Njoku. Uh, let's go with Evan Ingram. He seems to, you know, be fitting in nicely in Jacksonville. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to put up the exact same numbers that we saw last year. That's why, depending on what happens in the next couple of picks, I will get some insurance at the tight end position. We'll probably make two more selections um, in the ninth and 10th round and then kind of wrap this up. But there was a tight end run, so I, you know, I am glad that I at least got one of these higher-up tight ends. Uh, and Joku and Dalton Schultz were selected immediately afterwards. Uh, Cole Met also goes, Jackson Smith and Jigba. So it's starting to pick up right now. And I'm set at running back. I feel good about this. I feel really good about the situation. It's by far our best position group. Jordan Addison, if he falls to me, I would be very, very excited. That's what I'm hoping happens right now. Other guys that I wouldn't mind are Alan Lazard, uh, the number two uh, for Aaron Rodgers opposite Garrett Wilson. So those honestly might be my next two selections in that order, going with Jordan Addison, just a high upside guy, a rookie that I really like the landing spot. Um, you know, hopefully fitting in that Adam Thielen role, we'll see. So we just got to survive two more picks and, you know, we can potentially get him. Uh, Aaron Rodgers just went, so uh, let's queue up Jordan Addison, I guess. Yeah, uh, I feel good about it. We'll get some depth at the position and then we'll go with Alan Lazard and have the team rounded out. But overall, I, I really like how this thing went. We went running back heavy. We took advantage of these running back rankings on ESPN and, uh, I mean, Bijan, Pollard, Sanders, Alvin Kamara, I like that for some at wide receiver. Uh, D DJ Moore, if you believe in Justin Fields, I think, you know, uh, DJ Moore, probably one of the better quarterbacks he's played with. So he should have uh, an increase in production, obviously very, very talented otherwise. Chris Olave is somebody that I really like in general. He showed us everything that we wanted to see in more his rookie season. Evan Ingram, you know, here you could um, argue, should we go that next tight end? We just got sniped on Alan Lazard. So I don't really love any of these other guys. I did mention Quinn Johnson. Johnston is a guy, but, you know, uh, maybe we can show some love to these other tight ends. I think Gerald Everett showed us a lot to like last year with the Chargers. So let's get that depth there and kind of round this thing out. I think overall, uh, you know, as long as the wide receiver position stays afloat, then we're doing okay here. Uh, I'm not going to go super, super high because I would have liked in terms of draft grades um, to have, you know, uh, a nicer group of wide receivers on the bench. I only have Jordan Addison at this point in time. So I'll probably go like a B minus grade uh, but 
there's a lot to do with the running backs to potentially wheel and deal. Uh, but hey, let me know your thoughts. Do you agree? Disagree? Uh, if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at AllDayPigskin to continue interacting with us there. In the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.